you, what do you think about central bank independence at this point? I mean, it's been so talked about. It's been so focused on. The president has made very clear what he would like to see happen with rates, <clears throat> using his, his Twitter account to tell the world. I, I think that it's it, critically important that it stays independent. Um, there has to be some place where the facts matter more than politics or persons or people or even the moment. And I think this is one of those places and one of those spaces. And, and like I said, the color is not red or, or, or blue, as in political parties. It's green. And I, I keep saying people vote their, uh, vote their pocketbooks. This is the best way to keep that uh, party going is to keep politics out of it. Uh, and uh, I think some of these nominees <coughs> were never intended to win. Kane was uh, entertainment. Uh, that really wasn't serious. Maybe that was an attempt to signal. Um, uh, there are others, uh, like the vice chairman, who I think are very, I know him very well, very serious people. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this is the right call. Becky, I think what's interesting is, is, is there's been a change in the process here within the White House. And I know this because I, I was able to report early on those, that, that, that four successful one came out of this group inside the White House that was doing things the way things used to be done before Which by other what? administrations. Betting you find somebody, you vet them first, their name doesn't come out publicly, that kind of thing. I mean, I guess Powell was always out there. But, and then you also consult with the Fed. It feels like the four that haven't made it were sort of off the top of the head of the president. I think he read or saw something about Moore and decided, oh, I want that guy okay, on, yeah. and then came. And then same. it hasn't been the same deliberative process that was going on inside the White House. It's, it's changed somewhat. He's, he's more out there, the president is more out there in terms of the picks that he's throwing to the Senate. Hey, John, let's talk about the work you've been doing in the community yep. in terms of trying to make sure that you are getting financial literacy and financial access to communities that haven't had it in the past. Operation Hope is now, what, 150 inside locations and banks? 150 locations, 30 states where we're physical, 40 states where we have a presence, uh, plus Puerto Rico and uh, the District of Columbia, uh, 4 million clients. We directed $3.5 billion of capitalist money yeah, boy. Uh, in good. Underserved, in underserved neighborhoods that are paying, people are paying their bills. And uh, we've rehabilitated a bunch of people who now consider themselves part of the free enterprise system, homeowners, entrepreneurs. The guy who made the suit I'm wearing can't make <laughs> this up. That's, a, that's the it's, second. You've done that when you come on. You have that. He likes the suit. Well, well, it's not company. when I come on. It's my suits. Joe John, this came up with <laughs> the suits. The suits from that. You've mentioned yeah. him before. Yeah, dro John, uh, uh, Ryan, yeah. drove clothing. It came up in yeah. the hearing yesterday, the idea of people having to drive 30, 40 miles to the nearest bank. Yeah. W what is that like, and how does it change your ability to participate in capitalism if you can't get to a bank. Time is money. You know, I, I tell people all the time, I'd rather, if I had a choice between more time and more money, I say, give me more time, I'll make more money. Uh, but when you're in these neighborhoods, you're constantly uh, degraded. Your dignity is constantly robbed because nothing is efficient. Uh, nothing's available. Has technology uh, not helped to change that <clears throat> to some degree? Uh, Meaning um, what, what you can do on a phone, but... Uh, you know, I, I this can community you're that. talking it goes, about it goes have the access other to way. the phone? Does it have access? Right, well, this is the question. They're closing down the community banks. We went down to the Delta, yeah, Mississippi, that story that you and, and, and they're closing down the banks because more banks are going virtual. Yeah, but you, you need, with communities that have trust issues, you need high touch before you can have high tech. Mm -hmm. And we're going back to the Fed for a minute. <laughs> The Fed is the one place where I have not actually been able to. I've actually had to have a little decorum. I was told actually don't ch don't hug the Fed chairman when I took him. <laughs> I, took, I took Greenspan in the inner city to teach yeah. financial literacy. I took him actually Bernanke and <laughs> Greenspan, and uh, I hugged him anyway. But uh, so it's know. like when you approach the Queen, like make sure you don't right. turn your back, step backwards, mm -hmm. don't hug. But the point was, hey, what they're what they're really know. saying was, John, this is not this is he's not a politician. Hopefully one day she. He's not, a, you know, again, he's not a politician. This is not, a, this is, you know, let's have some, again, decorum. Let's have some respect for the independence of the office. I didn't hug him on, on camera, but I, I, but John, I, I, think, I thought he needed point, a hug. John, John, get to this point, because we ran across this idea, too, that the computers tend to make algorithms and, and are very good at finding out the credit risk. But some of the loans that you make are because you essentially, you go, th you find ways to make the loans that are different from what the algorithms and the credit... Which is going back to the way America site. was built. Character. It's called character lending. You know, actually, character... Piece actually by piece, account. person by person, yeah, rather and, than and by the algorithm. Copies of utility bills, copies of phone bills. Right. What's your, what's your, you know, if you're paying an insurance payment, that's a form of credit. It doesn't show up in your credit report. We work... 95% right. we of people have an error on their credit report. But who's helping them to understand that, to write a letter to uh, dispute that? If we dispute that, 
the, the law states the credit bureaus even have to approve it or pull it off your credit report. It's a 40 point pop on your credit score. It defies the right. goes up. So what do you make? The uh, confidence goes up. Let me ask you a quick tech question. Yeah. There are people like Max Levchin uh, at a right. firm Max who's, is a, a who's trying to rewrite what the FICO score even is, how it's defined. You have, by the way, the folks in China, you look at what Ant, uh, Ant Financial is doing, the way they're scoring people. They're not just, I mean, you might have some real problems with some. They'll, if, if you get up off the subway and give somebody your seat and their camera's watching, literally all of these things are going into the metrics, into whether you're a good person, bad person, gonna pay, not gonna pay. Is this, you know, technology, is technology gonna ultimately help us or hurt us? Uh, the, the answer, as usual, is it depends. Technology alone actually will, will hurt us. I'll give you an right. example. So Max is a great guy, a firm. Right. Uh, I'll talk to him tomorrow. And, but but if, if not, they're not careful, the company could actually help to un, uh, accidentally bankrupt a lot of people because you can literally microfinance uh, anything, uh, a plane ticket, right. uh, a, a, a car rental. Uh, and if it's five bucks a, a, a month, you say, oh, I can afford that because you think about what's the payment, not what's the interest rate or what's my debt. And you may not roll all this up to realize you're actually technically bankrupt. So I think if Max can embed financial literacy and financial coaching in his model, mm -hmm. now you can do high tech and high touch, doing well and doing good. I mean, my goal is to be 10% of all banking with financial coaching, 10% of all corporates with financial coaching. I think that will John, lift real quick, what's everybody. John, your default rate? What's your default rate? I know we got to go. 3%. 3%. Yeah. That's amazing. Defying all the odds and all the other stuff, and it's just 3%. Yeah. And I, and I, and I think that, we, you know, versus that's everybody trying to trade go, that's an Joe thing, yeah. as, a, as a customer, we should go look no, at the 100 million where, people where, who are below where the Where are you on radar with my daughter on, on first-generation investors? Why, why didn't you jump on that? I think They're, your daughter's much smarter than you. They have, they, <laughs> they have, cha they have chapters at all, all the and, and they get five hundred dollars to these kids to learn how to yeah, invest the money. Yeah. yeah. Well, why didn't you jump? Because I mean, it's not yours. Good. You got your own thing. Good. What? Good. I set you up. Just but because you're Caucasian and rich doesn't mean you get to go to the front of the line. It just takes time. Joe, stand up. <laughs>